YouTube, what's up? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this native effect. Uh, it's kind of like a weird distort clone glow. I don't know. It's I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of more of like a like an abstract effect. If you guys are new here, what we're doing is we're uploading one video every day all of December. So 31 videos in 31 days, and we're calling it Tutorial Miss. So if you guys aren't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. If you guys have any suggestions for videos, go ahead and DM me on Instagram with a link to a music video or a video that you think has cool effects or you can comment them down below with like a title of the video and a timestamp. I think for this video, if we wanna do some more night of effects, so let's get 100 likes just to kind of show that we uh, like these effects and stuff because it does take a while to break these down. This is definitely like a more advanced tutorial. So if you're new to editing or whatever, I'd recommend go checking out some of the other videos from Tutorial Miss. Uh, it's the first link in the description. Go watch a few of those and then come back. But yeah, that's enough talking for right now. So let's hop into After Effects and get this effect going. All right, so showing you guys the effect here, something just like that. This is this is where the start of my effect comes in right here. We'll just go frame by frame and kind of show you what it looks like. So you got the little warp there. We have this overlay. We're gonna we're not gonna go over the overlay. If uh, maybe we'll go over it if we get that hundred likes and go into a next video. But yeah, I figured out how to do the overlay is kind of like him. So we got like this distort behind him, some glow coming out, and clone copies. It zooms in really far, and then kind of back out. It's pretty quick, but uh, I think it's a really dope effect. And uh, you know, just how much time this took me to, to do. I can't imagine him editing this whole project because like this whole project's pretty much filled with effects like that. So I hope he got paid pretty well. Um, all right, so going, uh, going into the effect here, I just cut out the clip where I wanted the effect to take place. And like I said, uh, I'm expecting you guys know how to like rotoscope and stuff like that. If not, I have videos on it uh, on my channel, so just go check those. I already rotoscoped out germ here, so we can see what that looks like. Pretty clean rotoscope. So what we're gonna do here is just duplicate the layer with the rotoscope and delete that. And then, so there's a background layer and then we're gonna duplicate it again. And then we're gonna name, we're gonna rename these. We're gonna rename this top and then we're gonna rename this one blob effect or something like that. And then we're gonna rename this one background because there's gonna be a lot of layers in this one. So we kind of just wanna stay organized. All right, so now that we have that, what we're gonna do is go ahead and in the last tutorial, I was saying he uses human saturation. What I actually meant is colorama. Also, shout out to 19 visuals for uh, DMing me or uh, commenting on the video. Colorama, colorama, color. So drag that on there. And what you're going to see is we can actually turn off the background layer is it has this effect. Then we're just going to add turbulence displace to it. And that's going to start giving it the, the swirl effect, right? So what I'm going to do here is just crank up the turbulence displace pretty high. So we can kind of turn on that and see what that's going to look like. So maybe something like that. And then I'm just going to keyframe it all the way to the end. Not bring it down all the way, but just a little bit. So it has a little bit of movement. And then I'll make sure I'm going to the last frame. And then with all the keyframes pretty much in this whole effect, I'm just going to easy ease them. Uh, in the original effect I showed you, I did use the graph editor. But for the sake of the tutorial, uh, we're just not going to do that because it would take way too much time. So we already kind of have a cool blob effect there. And then we're going to go ahead and do is add Sapphire Distort. You can also use Blobalize as a default effect built into After Effects. So we're just going to keyframe this to like one to something like zero here. I don't know. It just adds a little bit more of a movement to the uh, effect. And then I'm going to crank up the blur lens on the uh, the effect at the beginning, like something like something where it like starts connecting like this. Cause I want the effect to start looking like that and then uh, go back a little bit towards the end. And then we can see what that looks like. So there we are, it, it like kind of goes back into its form. Again, these are all just things that you could uh, change to whatever you like. I'm gonna make sure I drag the keyframe to the last frame. And then again, easy easing both of these. And then uh, adding some Sapphire glow or just any kind of glow would work. Start off with like zero glow and then go two frames in and have it go to two. And the reason I keyframe the brightness like that is because we're actually gonna go to transform here and scale, and I'm gonna have it scale and uh, position keyframed. I'm just gonna hide the effect behind germ here. So we can just move it kind of right there and then go two frames and then reset both of them. And then we're gonna go to toggle switches and modes until you see this tab right here and what that's going to do is just add motion blur so it's going to it's going to blur from behind and that way it kind of explodes like that i think we're going to go actually like four frames for this and then just because we want four frames i'm going to keyframe the glow like that as well and then going through and trying my best to remember to easy ease all these so you can kind of see it just like explodes back there 
I think we need the glow to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, we could just make the, the width of the glow. You don't actually have to keyframe anything, but just the width of the glow a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go to Colorama, and I'm actually gonna do the input phase, and then just keyframe it, maybe something a little bit over 360 throughout the whole thing. So what that's gonna do is just gonna have the colors changing in the background, it just adds a little bit more of a dynamic to it. And already like that, it's looking like a pretty cool effect. What we can do is just slap some flicker on it. It's another Sapphire plugin. If you don't have it, uh, I'd recommend it. And we can do something like amplitude 0.5. And then I'm going to keyframe the uh, the random frequency. So at the beginning, it's kind of slow, like something like 8. And then at the end, it gets to 30. So what that's going to look like is it's just going to start flickering a little bit more towards the end. And then I think I'm gonna actually move the amplitude up to something like one and then the Luma uh, amplitude, uh, something like 0.5. The Luma affects how bright and dark it gets and the uh, amplitude itself just uh, affects how much it does. So that's looking pretty cool. I think another plugin we could add on is Sapphire uh, Shake. And then I'm gonna go ahead and see what that looks like right off the bat. That looks pretty cool, but I want the amplitude to be like crazy. Like I want it to be something like, maybe like something like four. See what that looks like. Okay, maybe I lied a little bit too much. Something like 2.5. Then I'm gonna have the uh, frequency bring it down a little bit, maybe something like five. Actually, I'm gonna keyframe the frequency, something like three, and then maybe towards the end. And I'm liking the way that looks. It just kind of moves around a little bit more, so there's just a little bit more movement going on. And then what I'm gonna do is just Add some effects to the top layer real quick before we go ahead and duplicate it a bunch of times. So we can add some glow to it as well. Uh, Sapphire glow, maybe something like one. We're gonna keyframe it four frames in because remember we had that blob finally pop up after four frames. So I'm gonna keyframe it there so it kind of hits with that. And then I'm gonna go to zero. I think I'm just gonna leave it at one the whole entire time. And then I'm gonna add some, uh, some flicker to it as well. And it doesn't do too much, but it's just something extra that uh, makes the effect look a little bit better. And then we can go ahead and duplicate the top layer. And then I'm going to rename it to something like Clone 1, because this is going to be where the uh, the guys come out to the side. And then again, going uh, f four frames in, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to drag it so it cuts at the fourth frame. And then go to Transform and drag it to the side a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure I have the motion blur selected for these. And then you can just drag it however you want. I'm just gonna drag it. Some of that looks good to me. And then we can go ahead and go one, two frames in, duplicate it. And then I'm just gonna stay selected on the frame that's already open, cause it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's gonna be named clone one, but it's just gonna be the further out one. And then we can go ahead and uh, just drag it out like we did the last one. And then go two frames, one, two. And we can duplicate it again, drag again. You can do this as many times as you want. One, two, boom, boom, boom. I think we'll do one more clone. So we can go ahead and duplicate that layer. Go two frames in, one, two, drag it that way, and then drag the position back out. And then once it gets here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four frames and keyframe the position, and then go all the way to the end and reset it. And then we're gonna hover over this keyframe again, and then do the same exact thing for all of these uh, clones. And actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna easy ease these. Mm -mm. So just make sure you're on that same keyframe that starts when it starts going back, and then reset it. I guess you can push F9 for um, a shortcut. I did not know that. I'm gonna transform again, lining up that first keyframe for when it starts going back, and then keyframing it in, and then resetting it, lining up that keyframe again. This is the last one. And then clicking reset. And then you can see the clones all pop up and then they slide back in. And then you can add any effects you want to these clones. Since we uh, duplicated it once we added the flicker and glow, uh, both the clones will actually, or all the clones will actually have that. So that's pretty cool. And then also just make sure you have the motion blur selected so then when they slide back in, it kind of like blurs. And then I think that's looking pretty good. What we can go ahead and do is actually shift click all of these and then pre-compose it so we can add some effects to uh, the overall layer. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add CC scale wipe, just something I added and I'm gonna make it come from the right hand side. So we're gonna type it 90 and then choose the center somewhere like on your subject and then you can stretch. I'm actually gonna move the center 
somewhere a little bit more and float the stretch. And then remember those first four keyframes, one, two, three, four. So that's when the original effect's gonna start taking place. So then we can reset it. And then I'm gonna go to the effects. And again, using the easy ease uh, shortcut F9. I just like the way that uh, the scale wipe goes in and then the clones start popping out. It kind of just like transitions a little bit easier. And then uh, start, we could just start slapping some effects on it because I feel like that's a, that's kind of what Knight of does. He just, I mean, he, he definitely has a set amount or a set of effects that he adds. And then I'm gonna choose a frame, like something right here, right where the last frame before the clones start going in. And then I'm gonna drag optic compensation on and drag that in a lot. Keyframe it there, reset it at zero, and then reset it at zero here. So it kind of has that bounce because we're gonna eventually zoom in and stuff. That's already looking pretty good with the bounce. It just adds a little bit, something extra to it. I think I'm gonna add some chromatic aberrations on. Uh, that's universe as well. I'm just gonna leave that default. I like the way that looks. It just adds a little bit of blur and color separation. And I think I'm gonna add some glow. Sapphire glow again. And then we're gonna keyframe the brightness. At this keyframe, the keyframe where the peak of the bounces. And then we can go to something like zero here. And then zero at the end as well. Going to the keyframes and easy easing them. Now this is probably where you wanna actually go to the graph editor. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it for the tutorial, but I really want the, uh, the glow to kind of like hit. Just for like a frame. Like it's really intense for like a frame. So something like that. I just made the keyframes closer by dragging this, uh, these lines here. This is more of like a flash. And then maybe I'm just gonna change the color to something like uh, like a light blue. It's still pretty white, but just adds a little bit of that color from like the sky and the ocean in the background. I like the way that looks. We can go and add some flicker just onto this overall uh, clip as well. And I think I'm just gonna turn down the uh, random frequency, maybe something like 15. And then we're gonna find that one frame where the uh, clones start going back in that we keyframed everything on. And then we can make uh, this layer a 3D layer and add motion blur. And then we can right click uh, down where we have some space and go to camera and then add a camera. And we can just cut the camera right over the clip because that's all we need it for. And I'm gonna go to that one frame where we were talking where we want that bounce. Go to camera transformations. First, actually, I'm gonna keyframe the just everything right there. And then I'm gonna hold, uh, I'm gonna press C on my keyboard so we can get a little zoom in until we get this arrow and then we can zoom in like that. Um, you can position it however you want. I'm gonna go to the Z rotation and rotate it just a little bit and then go to the last frame and then just click and reset on all of these. Even if you didn't af affect them, I just reset them just in case so it doesn't look weird. And then adding some easies. Let's see what that looks like. And then maybe I just wanna zoom in a little bit more. And then like I said, you can play with and then, like I said, you can play with the graph editor to do whatever you want. Uh, make the zoom in like a little bit more ramped up or whatever. But uh, I think that's pretty good looking right now. Let's see what that looks like versus the one that I made earlier. I spent obviously a little bit more time because I wasn't explaining it. But I think it's a pretty similar effect. I made the optic compensation a little bit more intense and then the glow a little bit less intense. But uh, I mean, those are all things that you could just uh, play with later on. We'll make the opt optic compensation a little bit more intense and then glow maybe something just like one here and then maybe add the uh make the glow with a little bit less and then you can even add some shake onto the overall uh pre-comp layer i'm just kind of showing you guys what effects you can do to make your uh clips as crazy as night of because like obviously he just adds like a bunch of effects on and like it's really hard to break down like specific effects he has a lot of shake he has a lot of uh, chromatic aberrations, glow, he has a lot of clones, masks, hue and saturation changes, uh, blurs, just stuff like that. So I'm kind of just showing you guys a list of effects that you could add on to make an effect like that. And then obviously don't just copy this one exactly. So I think I'm going to keyframe the uh, amplitude from the beginning, like something like zero. And then right here, when it gets to the last one, maybe two, so it's pretty intense. We'll see what that looks like. And then looking back at the effect, that's pretty much it. I feel like that's a, uh, we recapped uh, kind of uh, a night of effect. Yeah, like I said, guys, if you guys want another night of tutorial, uh, let's get a hundred likes on this video and then we can break down a few more in-depth 
effects by him. Uh, we can even go over that overlay effect I had at the beginning of the video. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and like and comment. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. I'll also include a link to the tutorial miss playlist below. So if you want to learn some more effects, go ahead and click that. It'll be the first link in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.